Have you ever wondered how we found Earth's position in the Milky Way? We know today that our Earth is located in one of the outer spiral arms of a galaxy. But this knowledge is not as old as you might think. The journey to this point, where we have finally found out where we are in the galaxy and in the universe, is like an adventure. To find out where we are and what the universe really is, astronomers have built ever more sophisticated instruments. To unravel the secrets of the heavens, some researchers even went to prison and endured severe torture. It is strange to think that our Earth is nothing more than a tiny dot in a galaxy of around 100 billion stars. Today, we know that our Earth is located at the outer edge of the Milky Way, or to be precise, quite close to the edge in one of the four spiral arms. Just a few hundred years ago, people had no idea about this. They thought the Earth was the center of the universe, and nobody was quite sure what stars actually were. The worldview was dominated by the church for a long time. The only people who were allowed to deal with such questions were scientists selected by the church or nobles, who were often not allowed to research freely, but had to defend certain opinions. If others came along and suddenly claimed things that deviated from these norms, they had to expect harsh punishments. This is what happened to Galileo Galilei, for example, who is considered a historical superstar today and whose name almost every child knows. What few people know is how much Galileo was opposed by the church and other authorities of his time throughout his life. William Herschel had a better time of it. The astronomer was more widely recognized. Herschel had the good fortune to do his research in the late 18th century when the ideas of antiquity had returned to people's consciousness with the Renaissance. Knowledge that personalities such as Ptolemy, Aristotle, and Hipparchus had developed was at least as recognized as that of the church, and in principle, our natural science today is still based on the knowledge gained by people who looked at the sky with the naked eye, or simple telescopes 3,000 years ago. In the 4th century BC, a man called Democritus already realized that the points of light in the sky were other suns and, strangely enough, this Democritus also had knowledge of atoms as the small building blocks of matter. Today, we can only smile about how this man came to his knowledge. For a long time, people still assumed that the points of light in the night sky had been pinned there by a god, and it's only since the 1920s that we have actually known for certain that we are located within a galaxy with many other suns, and what's more, that our galaxy is not the only one. Celestial mechanics is a miracle. Imagine for a moment ordinary people looking at the sky hundreds of thousands of years ago. They saw a bright white disk moving across the sky during the day. This was periodically joined by another shape, which sometimes appeared circular, sometimes semicircular, and then like a crescent, before disappearing completely for a while. As soon as it got dark, points of light appeared in the sky which, in a world without any light pollution, must have looked like a sea of fireflies all over the globe. People began to observe the changes. They recognized lunar cycles, the changing phases in the course of the sun, and they saw that the starry sky was also changing. People were particularly fascinated by the events in the sky. They built their cults around it, erected sites such as Stonehenge, and slowly developed sciences that dealt with the connections between the processes in the sky and those on Earth. We have known that the Earth is not flat since Columbus sailed to America. Before he was able to prove this, Columbus had to endure fierce attacks, be humiliated by the church and his contemporaries, and fear for his life. Galileo Galilei suffered a similar fate in the 16th century. Among other things, he discovered the four largest moons of Jupiter and realized that the Earth was most likely not the center of the universe. The passionate scientist was interrogated several times, had to hand over his work equipment, and was placed under house arrest to prevent him from spreading his heretical views. His compatriot and contemporary, Giordano Bruno, publicly expressed the idea that the universe was infinite and that stars could be distant suns within their own planetary systems. His knowledge and courage earned the man interrogation, torture, and ultimately death at the stake. For long periods of time, science was really only something for the hard-boiled or those who were in the special favor of nobles. He succeeded in mapping the sky for the first time, William Herschel. William Herschel had better starting conditions than Galileo and Bruno. Born in Germany, 
Herschel actually came into the favor of English aristocrats as a musician and eventually blossomed into an important astronomer and scientist. It's interesting to note in this context that music and astronomy were inextricably linked in ancient times. Researchers such as Aristotle claimed that the universe emitted sounds, and some even believed that this music of the spheres carried information through the universe. Whether this is why ancient scientists had their unusual knowledge is a fascinating question that we will probably never answer. But back to Herschel, who succeeded in discovering the planet Uranus in 1781. This catapulted the scientist into the top league of astronomers of his time, and he received plenty of support for his further research. Herschel was not only an unusually talented musician and astronomer, but also built some of the best telescopes of his time. His absolute masterpiece was a 40-foot reflector telescope with a 1.2-meter mirror, which Herschel completed in 1789. It was the largest telescope in the world until well into the 19th century. The researcher used this telescope to map the stars in the night sky for the first time. In order to be able to approximately count the incredible number of stars, he divided the night sky into around 600 zones. However, even Herschel did not know exactly what stars were at that time. He and other scientists were already of the opinion that stars were other suns with planets, but the evidence was lacking. Through his counting, Herschel determined that the entirety of the stars had a disc-shaped structure and concluded that we are probably part of this structure. This map was a significant advance in understanding the structure of our galaxy. But Herschel also made a mistake, simply due to the lack of power of telescopes at the time. He did not know about interstellar dust, which blocks the light from stars and makes the central region of the galaxy appear darker. As a result, he assumed that the center of the Milky Way was less densely populated with stars than it actually is. His estimate of our Earth's position within the structure was also incorrect, as he saw us in a central position within the disk, and this is not true. More than 100 years passed before we finally discovered that we are only a small part of a galaxy that is only one of millions. Shock in the 1920s, the Milky Way is a galaxy. Can you believe that up until the 1920s, scientists still had to assume that the Milky Way was the universe? Only slowly did the worldview change, and this was made possible by the appearance of a completely new generation of telescopes. At the beginning of the 20th century, the American astronomer Henrietta Swan Leavitt made a groundbreaking discovery that was to revolutionize astronomy. During her work at Harvard College Observatory, the scientists studied Cepheids, which are a class of pulsating stars. She found that there is a direct relationship between the brightness of these stars and their pulsation period. The longer the period, the brighter the star. This discovery became known as Leavitt's Law, and using the pulsation period of the Cepheids as a yardstick, astronomers were able to determine distances to distant stars and galaxies for the first time. The scientists' work laid the foundation for the work of astronomers Edwin Hubble and Harlow Shapley. Harlow Shapley worked at the Mount Wilson Observatory and used the positioning of globular clusters to determine the size and shape of the Milky Way. He showed that our solar system is far from the center of the galaxy. Edwin Hubble also worked at the Mount Wilson Observatory and was the first to see Cepheids in the Andromeda Nebula in 1923, proving that this nebula is indeed an independent galaxy outside the Milky Way. He published his discovery in 1926, revolutionizing our understanding of the universe. Hubble's work led to the shocking realization of how large the universe really must be, and this development has not stopped to this day. Not only did Shapley determine that we are at the edge of the Milky Way, he also recognized that the center of the Milky Way lies in the direction of the constellation Sagittarius. And with his estimate of about 25,000 to 30,000 light years distance between the center and the Earth, he was already quite accurate. The final determination of our position within the Milky Way was only made by the Gaia satellite of the European Space Agency. Gaia has shown that our solar system is located almost exactly 26,000 light years from the galactic center in the Orion arm of the Milky Way. And this is the most accurate determination of our galactic address to date. Gaia was launched in 2013 and shortly afterwards began its mission to create a detailed three-dimensional map of the Milky Way. By precisely measuring the positions, 
distances and movements of over a billion stars, Gaia was able to map the structure and dynamics of our galaxy with unprecedented accuracy. As you can probably imagine, it's not so easy to observe the galaxy we find ourselves in. When researchers in the Andromeda Galaxy look at the Milky Way, they can see its shape and structure much better from a distance. We therefore know more about distant galaxies than about our own, and we can also photograph such distant galaxies. With the Milky Way, however, things become more difficult, as we are a long way from being able to send a probe beyond the borders of the Milky Way and take a galactic selfie of ourselves. Most representations of the Milky Way are therefore artistic interpretations or images composed of fragments and simulations. Click on subscribe now and be part of every new video.